This episode is brought to you by Forney Industries, official sponsor of Faction 46 and Nice Motorsports Truck Series teams. Forney offers versatile welding and plasma cutting machines, along with a full line of metalworking accessories for beginners, do-it-yourselfers, and professionals. Forney has everything you need for your next metalworking project. Shop for these top-of-the-line products at ForneyIND.com, that's F-O-R-N-E-Y-I-N-D.com, or at an authorized Forney dealer near you. Hey there, NASCAR fans. Have you got your copy of the latest edition of NASCAR Pole Position Print Magazine? If not, there's no better time than now to subscribe at PolePositionMag.com. NASCAR Pole Position is the only print magazine covering NASCAR. Officially licensed by NASCAR, NASCAR Pole Position Magazine is published throughout the NASCAR season, and each edition is an instant collector's item, backed with great feature stories and photography. The magazine is even mailed to you in a poly bag for those who love to collect NASCAR memorabilia. At PolePositionMag.com, you can even find past issues available to purchase. Get your subscription to NASCAR Pole Position and get great NASCAR content delivered straight to your mailbox throughout the season. Learn more at PolePositionMag.com. That's PolePositionMag.com. Hey, y'all, Rick Houston here, and I want to tell you about my new show, the Moonshine and Motorsports Racing Podcast. I've partnered up with the state of North Carolina Department of Natural and Cultural Resources to help uncover the history behind moonshining mountain boys, professional wheelmen, and the backwoods and city lights of the Tar Heel State. In the first episode, I sat down with Winston Kelly at the NASCAR Hall of Fame for a little behind-the-scenes gossip about Junior Johnson's engineering skills. He's got two things in his hand, pipe wrench and channel lock pliers, and they weren't new. They had been been around the block a time or two. What's the first deal they built, I bet? No, no, you know, I think they were, the the pliers had been red before, but paint had worn off. And in the second episode, I talked to a professional hillbilly, a.k.a. Dr. Daniel Pierce of UNC Asheville, to find out the real history of moonshiners and their battles with the revenuers. He wrote about one of his experience of trying to chase down this uh, this bootlegger and this this souped up car, and he he complained that the government gave him these piece of crap cheapo cars and that, that were really no match. But he thought he was doing pretty good, and then the guy just hits it and just takes off and practically disappears. But then the guy makes a bootleg turn uh, and comes back towards him. And as he said, it was a game of chicken, and I was the chicken. And so he ran off the boat. And actually, he was the guy who, who caught Junior Johnson at his daddy's steal when Junior got tangled up in a, in a barbed wire fence. So check out the Moonshine and Motorsports Racing Podcast, available on YouTube, DailyDownForce.com, and all of your favorite podcasting platforms. And be sure to check out my regular show on NASCAR history, the Scene Vault Podcast. You're listening to Made in Level Cross, presented by Pristine Auctions. I'm Thad Moffitt. And I'm Roland George. And today we're joined by a longtime Petty fan, and uh, I guess we could call him the president of the Thad Moffitt fan club, Jim Boyle. Safe to say the number one dad fan, I would assume, right? Glad to be here. Yeah, thank you for being here today, Jim, and uh, talking to us and letting us pick your your brain a little bit. So I'm just going to start off by asking you, like, what intrigued you about the Petty family to become a fan, and when when can you pinpoint that you became a fan? Back in 1981, I lived in Box Elder, South Dakota. Me and my dad was watching the Daytona 500, and my dad was a Richard Petty fan. Well, I didn't want to be exactly like my dad. So uh, I picked Kyle's car because it looked really, really the same. So it started way back when, and I said, I'm going to have one of those cars one day. So that's exactly how I became a Petty fan. And you do have one of those cars, Jim. Tell us about your Buick. Yes, I do. It's uh, When I turned 50, I said, if I don't get it done, I'm never going to have it. So I found an old Buick Regal and uh, – had it painted up to look exactly like Kyle's car in 1981. And Petty's Garage, they were nice enough, 
you know, to put a nice engine in it, nice rear end, and make it really, really fast. <laughs> so yeah. it's a lot of fun. It looks it looks like the car. I mean, yeah, it, it really does. It's like Kyle's 1981 Buick Regal. And it turns a lot of heads, too. I've seen pictures of Jim's car yeah. on, like, Twitter and Facebook. Like, hey, look at Kyle Petty's car driving down yeah. the street. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. Well, I mean, this is this is where in a podcast, you know, there's really not a lot of visual, but I, I got to say, like, Jim is decked out, man. I mean, behind him, he's got a, a Thad Moffat pit sign. He's got STP cans. He's wearing one of Thad's shirts. Like, what kind of collection you got, man? I, I know there's more behind you than what we can see. But Oh, yeah. I've, one day we might be, go, be able to go over everything I got. I got hoods, fenders. Yeah, a lot of Thad stuff I've got, you know, through the years. If there was a fire, God forbid, I, I don't want to wish this, but it like what it's interesting is Richard said, if there was ever a fire at the museum, the one thing he'd rescue is his Congressional Medal of Freedom. I'm sure you don't have a Medal of Freedom, but is there something in that room that that you would definitely want to take? Anything cool that you um, couldn't live without? I, I don't know. I, I I can't, I can't really pick one thing. It'll be all devastating. You know, I mean, there's, there's stuff from Thad's late model stuff, you know, way back when he raced with empire all the way up to uh, this year. So I, I really don't know. I can't pick one thing. It'd be devastating. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, <clears throat> we hope, we hope nothing like that ever happens, but that's just something that I always thought was interesting with Richard. You know, he, Besides the cars, the trophies, that was the one thing he'd want to rescue. And fantastic. So what about you? Do you have well, anything that you'd rescue? Yeah, well, um, I don't know, man. I mean, probably it's hard to pick. Like, I have my championship trophy from the Southeast Limited stuff. That was my first championship. I'd probably have to take that trophy. I mean, kind of like Jim, I'd be devastated. <laughs> you know, like my, my STP fire suit would burn yeah. up from my truck debut. So it'd be tough to leave that one behind. My first helmet that got painted. Like, there's a lot of stuff that I have that it would be devastating too. But if I had to get out of there and get something, I'd probably get my first championship trophy because you can't you can't get that one back. I no. could always I could right. always get my helmet painted the same as it was, or it wouldn't be the original. But you could yeah. you could mimic it, right? But Jim, all the way from South Dakota, man. I mean, that's that's not really NASCAR country. So you and your dad, how like? Was your dad just grow up a race fan? I mean, it wasn't obviously a big NASCAR area out there. I don't even think there's a track in South Dakota. Maybe a dirt track Maybe or something. There is. Tell us, Jim. Yeah, there's a Black Hill Speedway uh, in Rapid City, this track we used to go to a lot and just watch them, you know, drive around. But no, South Dakota, Badlands, where Kyle is right now for the charity ride, real close to there. It's where I grew up. So there's not a lot of racing, especially NASCAR. No. <laughs> So he just traditionally grew up a race fan. Maybe his dad was a race fan or, or something of that nature. Like, I mean, traditionally from the South, everybody watches it, right? Mm -hmm. Here in North Carolina, South Carolina, all the way down the East Coast, up the East Coast. You kind of, I mean, you know of NASCAR, even if you're not a big fan, but very rarely do do I hear of, of fans from Wyoming, Idaho, you know, Montana, North and South Dakota. It's It's kind of foreign out there to those guys so but you do have a few uh, members from from that area you know montana's a few members colorado's got a few members you know in the fan club so you know i've just, you know basically had a spreadsheet of people who like registered you know and you do have quite a few people in the midwest that's awesome tell, tell us about that fan club first of all big shout out to you thank you for all you do to help out with you know that's career the fan club we love, love, love our fans. Probably you got some of the most loyal fans, I think, out yep, there. That's I, right. I'm, I'm proud to say that. Yeah. And Jim does a good job of, like, Excellent doing job. doing giveaways and uh, yeah. cool interactions, like keeping the fans engaged, even, like, with my schedule the past couple of years. It's been right. like, even with the truck stuff, it's only 23 races, right? So yep. it's not like every weekend they have something to do. So we just came from a couple weeks off and – Jim keeps them engaged every day. So uh, that's really cool. How do you really do it, cool. man? How do you get the energy? <laughs> yeah, I try to. It's it's a lot of fun, you know. I You know, it's just a long time ago, back when you won your limited late models championship, that's when I caught on and said, there's no fan club. So we, we've got to make it. So I didn't even ask for permission. Sorry, Thad. <laughs> <laughs> 
uh, we just did it on Facebook, called it Thad's Fan Club, Thad's Fans, and started doing weekly weekly drawings. You know, that's how it originally started, trivia and weekly drawings. Yeah. Love it. What are we up to now? Is it, isn't it close to 2,000 members? I think it's over 2,000. It's 1,800. 1,800. There you go. There we go. There we you got, go. We need 200 more. Hit that two number. Yep, so. that's what we're looking at. You know, out of out of everything that you can imagine – with Thad's career, after Thad left Arca, what did you expect him to go to Truck Series Xfinity? Like, were you surprised by the announcement? I this is something I thought about asking a fan because a fan came up to me in Martinsville and was kind of surprised that Thad was going to the trucks. I don't know why, but you know, what was that experience when you found out he was going to trucks? Well, what surprised me first, not to go off the topic, is when he raced uh, last year. In the Grand Trans Am series. Trans Am series, okay. Yep, I'm sorry. So that that gave a lot of experience, a lot of exposure, and road courses. So I was hoping for trucks. I was hoping for Xfinity after that. So once he did that Daytona 500 STP car truck, excuse me, then uh, then it started. I was like, yes, we're moving up. We are definitely moving up. Yep. Well, that's awesome. And then we had. The truck series where we ran the four races or whatever, and believe it or not, a long time ago, I think I did an interview where I had talked to my grandpa about running some truck stuff, and he said, don't run the trucks, <laughs> that, they're, that they're a waste of time. And so I went out and said, okay, grandpa told me not to run the trucks, and then then here I am in 2024 running trucks full time. But I wouldn't trade it for anything, man. It's been a, an experience for sure, and I think it's, there's a lot to be learned there. But he, he wanted us to jump straight from ARCA to the Xfinity stuff. I have a, a question, Jim, for you because I like I have an idea of some of the races I can remember. But as watching as a fan from your perspective, what are some of your like if you could pinpoint one or maybe two or three races that you've watched me run over the years that just had you on the edge of your seat jumping out of jumping out of the seat? Could you pinpoint a couple? Yes, most definitely. Greenville Pick and Speedway, late models. It was yeah. tough. <laughs> it was a really short track, and you were definitely beating and banging and fighting for every position that you could get. That was with Empire. You know, that was the most exciting that I've seen. Yeah, absolutely. And I think we, we had some success at Greenville, and we had some bad races at Greenville. But <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but overall, it was fun. I think running those days with Empire was, was a lot of fun for me, and it's something I look back on and um, wouldn't trade it for the world. You know, running with Grumpy and Derek and all those guys, and – it was, a, it was a great time in my life to just learn and learn how to drive race cars. And like Jim said, we won the Southeast Limited Late Model Championship our first year together, and that was huge for us. And just to snowball from there, we ended up picking up a win at Myrtle Beach. And so it was it was fun. Anderson, I think we won a race at. So yep. Yeah, you was, did. Yeah, so it was a lot of fun just, just to learn and to move forward and uh, to just – keep growing with those guys and what we could do. So absolutely. So sounds like Jim, you've been through a lot of Thad's, especially early career stuff. What I mean, how many can you recall how many races you've been to watching Thad? No, uh, no, I can't. I remember driving <laughs> six hours to Myrtle Beach, you know, getting off work at midnight just to go down there and see Thad race, you know, get in the pits and a lot of Myrtle Beach trips. A lot of Myrtle Beach trips. That is dedication. Six hours? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Dude, when I used to race in Myrtle Beach, I'm not kidding. Like, we had a whole, like, at-track fan club. <laughs> like, Jim was yeah. there. and uh, Yeah. I, I talked to everybody in who lived around Myrtle Beach, make a sign, and there was, like, 15, 20 people in the pits, you know, with Thad signs. And- yeah. <laughs> At the back of our hauler, yeah. there was like people in Thad Moffat stuff head to toe with signs. Didn't and- we see somebody with a shirt at Martinsville? There were several the people, yeah. I want to – that'd be cool to recreate that shirt, man. That was a cool shirt, and that one was. But um, I was like, man, that's a good-looking shirt. My late model shirt? Yeah. Yeah, it was good. It was a good-looking cool. car. I like oh, the yeah. late model paint scheme. There's a question for you, Jim. What's your favorite paint scheme that I ever ran? Uh, I liked the, uh, the, for late model, the black and blue. Yeah. When you first started. Yeah. You know, that, that was, that was pretty cool. I, I like black, black vehicles. Okay. 
Most everybody's uh, answer is that STP truck that I ran at Daytona was the best looking truck I ever <laughs> ran. And I'm like, man, can't I have something of my own? Because that's a copy of Grandpa's paint scheme. That's how I look at it. That's how yeah. I look at it. This is a bad thing. So yeah. That Darlington truck's going to be fresh, though. Oh, yeah, that Darlington <laughs> truck's going to look good, Jim. Yeah, I I always tell people, they always say, man, if I won the lottery, I'd sponsor Thad. It doesn't take to win the lottery. You, we've got that program where, you know, $40, you can help sponsor Thad because that's theoretically yep. what you're doing. Yep. yep. You know. Thank you. You were a big part of that success. So um, for those, I mean, if you're listening, I would assume you would know about this program, but if you're – You've been living under a rock for the past month or so. We had a thousand names on the race truck with Thad's Darlington truck. And I think the last podcast, we didn't even reveal um, what it was. So, you know, now that it's out of the bag, it's Bobby Hamilton's 25th anniversary SDP car. He ran in 1996. Um, We did a lot of cool social media things with that, with Greg and your grandfather and even though the name program's not available as of right now, you still can buy those T-shirts and, and die cast. So it's going to be a good time at Darlington. You look forward to that? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, even my fire suit is a throwback oh, yeah. to uh, what he ran that year. And um, so it's going to be a really cool weekend for all of us. Darlington's always a really special place. So it's going to be Really cool for me to run the Petty 75 on the car and have all the fans on there with me. Like, that is the coolest thing ever. When they came with this idea, I was like, man, we got to make it happen. <laughs> we got to do this. Because, like, I always try to do stuff to to be involved with the fans and, and do what I can, whether it's Petty Fest or autograph sessions that aren't really scheduled that we just go do, is, is a unique opportunity for, like, the fans to have something – where their names, obviously my name's over the door every week, but this time their name's on the deck lid. So uh, that's really special. I saw a render of it and the Thad Moffat fan clubs on there. So I'm sure that was you, Jim. Yep. I took six people that said they couldn't afford it, and I just bought them their name as well. So they're pretty excited as well. Some of them have no idea. So they'll they'll be surprised when they get a package in the mail. What a guy, man. Yeah. Jim, you, you're a class act, man. I'm all right. That's so, awesome that you did that. So or, are, you, are you coming to any races this year? Uh, me and my daughter are going to Coca-Cola 600. We're definitely doing that. And we also uh, Richmond. Okay. There you go. Richmond's a big, big one for us. Yeah. We'll have the safety clean truck at Richmond. So, be a big deal for us yep. that weekend. What do, you, what do you think about that safety clean truck, Jim? Pretty bright. Pretty bright, right? Excellent, excellent. Really good to see. You cannot miss that one. Your average finish at Kansas, that is in the top 10. No yeah. pressure. <laughs> yeah, wait, that's what I was telling these guys. Like, a lot of these places, like Texas, I'd never been to. Martinsville, I'd never raced at. Uh, Kodai, I ran a TA2 race at. Bristol, I ran one ARCA race at. Where else did we race? Atlanta. Yeah, a lot of these places yeah. I'd never even, like, been to before. But now we're getting into, like, well, not Darlington either. But Kansas, at least, I'd run some ARCA races there. And we were always pretty successful in the ARCA car there. So I'm really hoping to get back on track in Kansas and, and put together a good, solid weekend. Looking forward to it. So when you go to racetrack, do you have any traditions you do, Jim? Any tailgating? Like wh- wh- when you get to the racetrack, what do you what do you like to do as a race fan? Just go there, put my headset on, and just watch. And all I do is keep an eye on one vehicle. That would be Thad's. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Do you, so do, I'm curious because you you know Thad, do you do you? I mean, obviously you watch the Cup Series. Do you root for Legacy or do you have another like? You know, no, I'm just curious. anybody who drives the 42 or the 43, I'll root for. Got it. Okay. Interesting. There you go. It, has it always been petties? Like, have you ever rooted for any other drivers or is just. Nope. Nope. It's always been whoever's in the 42 and 43. Wow. There you go. Goodness gracious. There you go. So with that being said, so you've had, gosh, there's been a lot of drivers in the 43 car. Right. I mean, since 1981. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, how, like, you have you have swag and memorabilia from, from all those drivers? Not all. Like, do you have an A.J. Allmendinger stuff? Yes. Yeah, I do have some Allmendinger stuff. Not a lot. Wow. You know, 
I, I mainly concentrate now on if I can get a hold of eight, 1981 stuff from Kyle, okay. I, I jump all over that. And then I, you know, obviously whatever Thad has, I'll jump on that. I got to ask, you're the first person I thought of. Did you see, uh, so Lionel Racing, they, they're the official diecast producer of, of NASCAR. You know, they, pr- they produce this historical series, which I love. It's all the raced versions. They actually came to the museum last year and took pictures of Kyle's Coke 600 win, Richard's 79 Daytona win. But when I heard they were releasing a 42 Kyle car, I was like, Jim Boyle's name is probably the first one for the pre-order. Is that true? Were you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I already ordered. I ordered one from Lino and then I ordered two from the museum. Oh, nice. <laughs> It, it, that's that's your car, right? Or was that is that yes. an eighty one or is any eighty two? There, I, I forget what it is. And it's definitely my car. It's an eighty one. Wow, so, that's awesome. That's pretty cool. The only difference on my car is there's an Automotive Lift Institute uh, decal on the bottom and a Victory Junction decal. Got it. So, how does that thing ride? Besides, I mean, obviously, this is a stupid question to ask. Do you like driving it? Yeah, of course you do, but. You know, is it? I've never, I've never driven an eighty-one Buick. I mean, what, what do you, does it take you to the racetrack? Like, do you, do you visualize yourself? Like, are you one with Kyle when you're driving it? Or, oh yeah, yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. <laughs> you know, it's a whole lot of fun. Channel that petty energy. I believe Thad took his uh, grandfather's to um, uh, Goodwood. 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 Yeah. Goodwood. Yeah, and yeah. the way I would describe it at speed is that it drives like a boat. <laughs> Like you kind of <laughs> just start guessing, you know what I mean? Like when you're running up the hill in a 1981 Buick and it's 2019 or 18, whatever it was at yeah. the time, it's like, man, I'm kind of just guessing where this thing's going to go. I couldn't imagine doing this at 200 mile an hour. So I definitely <laughs> gained a lot of respect for, for my grandpa at that time and what he did and what all those guys did back in the day. Um, I'm sure that, I mean, it wasn't obviously race ready when it left here and it was back in the day, but yeah, I think, Man, just his his original seat was in there too, yeah. and like just how he sat in the seat, I felt like all cockeyed. Like <laughs> it was weird feeling, man. But yeah, I, I, that was really cool experience for me, and uh, something I'll always look back fondly on. So what do you what do you got planned for the fan club the rest of this year, Jim? Any anything any teasers you want to put out there on the on the podcast or? Besides the, all already the amazing things you do with it, I mean, like Thad was saying, the giveaways, the the, the games, I, you stay engaged with everybody. But anything else you plan on doing this year? Not really. We started earlier in the year a state giveaway. I had a bunch of fans register what state and city are you from. So that's what we're doing, working on right now. Every Monday, I just pick a bunch of people from, you know, we just had uh, California and Colorado. So we just spin the wheel, and if you're from that state, boom, you're going to get a hero card signed by Thad or whatever the deal is. That's the biggest thing that we're doing now every Monday. And then we obviously got the Thad Thursday trivia and also the finish line game. The finish finish line game. Uh, Fans will predict where Thad finishes. Controversial. They cannot pick first place (laughs) because if Thad gets a W, everybody who gets that weekend – it's a chance to win a Thad diecast. Oh man! Oh yeah! You gotta get that win, man. Yep. Get and then win. somebody will get a diecast, <laughs> right? You're right. You're right. Oh yeah. Has anyone been correct this year? Yeah. Well, there's a couple people who've been correct as far as where they finished. Okay. So, yeah. We're hoping to change. We're that. hoping to change that. <laughs> yeah. Somebody needs to guess up front. We're hoping to change that in Kansas and Darlington. I mean. It's been a rough start. There's yeah. no lie. It's been a rough start, but we're going to get through it as a team and move forward. And um, just, I mean, a first-year team in any NASCAR series struggles, yep. and that's just bottom line. And uh, if we can continue to just progress on what we've got going, I think we'll end up in the right situation. Sure. I agree. You got a lot of support with the fans, Thad. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, it means a lot to me ha- having everybody and then reminding myself like when, when this Darlington deal came about that there was people that, that wanted to see me out there. You know, I mean, like there's people that are definitely behind me and I, I greatly appreciate every ounce of that. So 
it means a lot to me personally and to keeps me going to to get to that point for for you guys and for myself obviously and my family because there's a lot a lot left here to give from the petty family over the next 75 years so Absolutely. hopefully hopefully when i'm old we're celebrating the 150th <laughs> year of the petty family in nascar right that'd be awesome so we're just just trying to work our way to that i mean grandpa told me right there at the announcement he said now the rest is on you bud yeah no pressure <laughs> there no you pressure. go <laughs> so it's my my responsibility to keep it going so here we are and uh we're gonna figure out how to make it happen we're looking forward to it then well jim i i can't thank you enough a for being on the podcast today but just everything you do we cannot i mean i, I can't i can't thank you enough that i can't thank you enough to all the fans in the fan club we love you guys we appreciate the support the encouragement i mean it was amazing at petty fest seeing everybody so we're we're doing as best as we can right now and we can't thank you guys enough so jim thank you for all that you do really appreciate you not just as a fan but as a friend and you know you're part of the family here so definitely i look forward to seeing you at the racetrack pretty soon and always welcome back on the podcast this was fun it was i really enjoyed it thank you guys for having me i appreciate it yep absolutely yes thanks for joining us jim we'll be right back but first a word from our sponsors pristine auction is the most trusted sports memorabilia and collectibles auction site auctions on pristineauction.com start at just one dollar and each day thousands of signed items are available so you win signed authentic items at affordable prices every item on pristineauction.com comes with a certificate of authenticity from the industry's most reputable authenticator pristineauction.com is your one-stop shop for all authentic signed die cast helmets trading cards photos and so much more of your favorite. I got my eye on something I definitely cannot afford right now or ever. I just caught my eye. Grew up watching the GOAT of basketball, Michael Jordan, co-owner of 2311 Racing. But there is a FLIR card. I'm sure you're familiar with it. A lot of people are familiar with it. 86-87 FLIR card for his rookie year. $12,000 is the bid. So as much as I'd like to give a bit, I don't know if I can afford to do that, but it just caught my eye. I think it's really cool. There's going to be a lucky owner of one of those clear parts. What you got? Coming fresh off of the NFL draft, we have a Caleb Williams signed USC Trojans full authentic helmet. Uh, I think that's, that's pretty sweet. Something to get your hands on. Caleb Williams is a real deal. He's going to be good in the NFL, so it'd be something cool to get your hands on before he becomes all big and famous. Be sure to visit pristineauction.com and use code THAD10 for 10% off of your first purchase. Links are in the show notes. Induction Innovations is the leader in American-made handheld induction gears. Home to the original Mini Ductor for over 20 years, they've been innovating how mechanics can tackle challenges like Loctite, Rust, and so much more. Induction Innovations Mini Ductor series will meant to free up components quickly using induction gears. The Midi Doctor is designed to help techs cut down on ticket times and say, forget that torch. Induction Innovations. Do it faster. Do it better. Do it safer. Visit Inductor.com to learn more. Hey, race fans. Summer's almost here. Are you ready to throw open your windows or throw them away? If they're drafty, foggy, or impossible to open, talk to our friends at Window World. They specialize in home transformations with beautiful, energy-efficient windows, entry doors, and siding, featuring Energy Star certification and the good housekeeping seal. Call 1-800-WINDOW-WORLD. Schedule your free consultation. This episode of Maiden Love Across is brought to you by Window World, America's exterior remodeler. All right, we are back. Fresh from talking to Jim Boyle. Yeah. Big thanks to Jim for taking the time to talk to us. What'd you think, Thad? I mean, it's always fun to catch up with Jim, right? He's been a big part of my career for a while now, and he does a lot for me and for the Petty family as a whole. And it was cool to hear him and some of the things that he said about my progression in my career and some of the things that he's held on to. So always fun to catch up with Jim when I, when I have a chance. 
Amen to that. Well, we got a lot to talk about, my friend. A lot to talk about. Coming off a big weekend at Kansas for a lot of reasons. Big, I mean, that finish was amazing. But the true story, career best finish for T. Moffat here. 24th, you kept that truck nice and clean. Safety clean truck. I mean, you did everything that the name implies. Take us through that. What was going through your mind? I mean, new new guy on the pit box had a had a switch up over the uh, off weeks. What's been going on? Fill, why don't you fill the fans in? Yeah, so I mean, it was just a smooth weekend. I feel like we kind of flied under under the radar, and we did everything that we were supposed to do. Brought the truck home in one piece. Learned all night. Ran all the laps. At times in the race, we had top fifteen speed and top twenty speed almost the whole race, and was a little too conservative on the green flag stop. And I think that cost us a few positions, but I think that at the end of the day, I mean, all things considered, we, we went to Kansas and we did what we were supposed to do, right? Coming off of a bad stretch of three races in a row where we had part failures or accidents or anything in between going to Kansas, the goal for all of us was just to run all the laps. And I think that going and running all the laps and being somewhat competitive there was was pretty fun. You know, I learned a lot about air and aero blocking. And, uh, man, it really is tough to pass in them trucks on those mile and a half. So like, you can run them down from 30 car lengths back, and you can't get around them once you get close just because the air affects it so much. So I think that there was a lot to take away from that. And we just had, like I said, a quiet good night where we just learned all night and got better. I would agree with that. A hundred percent looks good out there. Going back, it should be better too. I would say like going back and unloading in the fall and knowing everything that I know now, I'd be a lot more confident and a lot better off going into that race weekend. I believe. Absolutely. Well, not only did you have a big night, but, uh, Young Money, Kyle Larson, had a fantastic night. Closest finish in NASCAR history. Yeah. What are your thoughts there? Dude, that was – I mean, that was pretty cool race to watch. I thought all the way around. I don't think anybody dominated. I mean, it looked like Ross Chastain in the beginning was like the car to beat, right? And then here comes Kyle Larson and Denny Hamlin led some laps, Christopher Bell, um, Chris Buescher. I mean – there was it was I thought it was a good mile and a half. I mean, it, it was entertaining all day. kept kept you engaged, uh, kept you watching the race, and yeah, it was it was solid for sure. And cut, watching that finish, man, I thought Chris Busher won. I can't be alone in that. I thought Chris Busher won when they hit the strike, and then when they replayed it a couple times, it was obviously Larson. Um, but I. I mean, it would suck to be Chris Buescher and be that close. I, I hate it for him and not be able to come out with a win. But what a cool a, a cool finish to be a part of, the closest finish in NASCAR history. Christopher Buescher will be in victory lane before the end of this season. Yeah, I mean, we had close finishes in NASCAR. We had the closest Kentucky Derby finish. Did you watch that at all? Yeah, I did not watch the Kentucky Derby. Before. Oh, man, dude. What a finish that was. I mean, yeah. we this weekend we were spoiled. We had we had closest finish in Kentucky Derby history, NASCAR history, and we had a career best finish for, for Team Offa. I mean, you couldn't ask for a better weekend, man. Yeah. I mean <laughs> I think I think that going into Darlington, like we have new goals and new expectations, right? We need to work on the little things. And I know we set out at the beginning of the season and Everybody wants to win races. And I came into this like, man, I just want to win. I just want to win. Like one mindset. But where we are now in season and knowing everything that we know, I think just setting little goals and little expectations like let's crack the top 20. And then when we crack the top 20, let's start trying to crack the top 15. And then if we can get into the top 15, then we'll start looking at some top 10s and and then just slowly progress that way and see what we can learn and and as a group just continue to get better. Cause I think, I think it's there. Everything's starting to kind of click and we're getting better, but um, shout out to 
Stevie on the roof. He did a great job talking me through Kansas. He's a man, dude. I've learned a lot from him. He does a good job. He spots Christopher Bell on Sundays and spots me on Fridays. And so, yeah, he's been a huge help in everything that I've done this year and, and just helping me to learn. Big shout out to your, you, I mean, all your teammates did really well, but kudos to Caden Honeycutt, man. I mean, that, I, I could not believe what I was watching. I mean, you know, he, he had some bad luck on pit road, but man, what a drive he put on. I was, I was really rooting for him to pass Mr. Heim time, but Corey got the win, but where, where did Caden finish? Fourth. Like fifth, I believe fourth. Yeah. So I mean, another uh, fantastic talent and really, really been a lot of fun hanging with him as a niece teammate. But speaking of Darlington, Dude, it's here. We are in throwback week. Yeah. Are you, are you? I've been asking you that every week. Same answer. Dude. You're beyond excited, right? Dude, yeah, I'm pumped. I mean, I think that, like, running this paint scheme, having the fans on there, freaking awesome. Like, you, it's not every day or every sport that you can interact with the fans like you can in NASCAR. And – Actually, in Kansas, I had a little kid come up and he said, my name's going to be on your truck next week. That's fantastic. And I was like, man, that's pretty cool. You don't you don't hear that very often, you know, so that's, that was super cool. Yeah, I'll be wearing my throwback T-shirts all week and weekend, and I got some old school petty stuff and a bunch of stuff that I like to wear anyways, but throwback week is just like, a different week for everybody. I feel like, like it takes us back to the roots and the history and everything that NASCAR started on and what better place to do it than Darlington. So, and one of our buddies, Jerry at, at Pays Garage, he just got his throwback shirt. So guys and gals, they're in the mail. They're being delivered as we speak. I got a delivery confirmation. Sorry, not a delivery confirmation. I got tracking information about that. So it's not too late. It's too late to get your name on the truck, but it is not too late to buy Darlington t-shirts and diecast. They are available all year round, and it's going to be surreal seeing this truck in person on Friday. I cannot tell you how excited I am. I'm going to get a little emotional seeing it because it, it's never been done before. Bobby Hamilton was such a huge personality with the Petty family. And to honor him, I don't think he's ever been honored with a throwback scheme. So really cool that you get to be the one to do that, Thad. But speaking of the throwback schemes, have you seen some of them? Oh, yeah, dude. Kyle Larson's throwback scheme is like the winner. like King, yeah. I mean, there's been some other ones recently, but I will say yours for trucks is still my favorite. But Kyle Larson is... He's got the best one of them. Ryan Ellis's was pretty good. Brennan Poole did the Hot Wheels car. That I, that was Brennan's cool. is really cool. I will, yeah. Brennan's is solid as well. I, I like Harrison Burton's got a pretty decent one, and you know we we got to we got to have people's voices heard with these schemes. I know NASCAR is allowing people to vote for their favorite Darlington scheme, and guess what? You can vote for Thad's scheme for favorite throwback schemes. So make sure you do that. I think it's per series you can vote. So, and then I, I will say, did you see Ryan Ellis's forty three? That's what I saw. It looks good. That looks Days of Thunder. I mean, how can you beat that scheme? Yeah, I'm, I'm scrolling through them right now. Thad, a lot of cool ones. Corey Himes doing a throwback to Cal Yarborough. There's a lot. Of- it's just hard. Every race car looks so cool. Like why? I mean. It just makes me want to go back to the day when they ran race cars that looked like that. Oh, I know. Unbelievable. Here, Here's what I will say. I, I just did see one that I forgot to bring up to you. So Jack Wood, he's driving the 91 McAnally. Yours is still my favorite, but this is a close second. He's throwing it back to Tim Flock. Did you see that one? No, I don't think I did. Oh, man, dude. It, so this scheme was run in 1952 by Tim Flock, NASCAR champion, in the Hudson Hornet. And that car can be seen at the NASCAR Hall of Fame. But uh, one of the most unique and cool aspects is this was the car that Jocko Flacco, the monkey, was running with with Tim Flock. You know that? Yeah. 
I see you worry it. about that? The, yeah. the monkey taco? Yeah, I see it now, man. That's pretty cool. Well, if you had an animal to choose from, what would you choose? Would you bring Knox with you? Yeah, probably my dog. Knox? Yeah. Knox is turning what? One? You just told me? It's his birthday. Knox will be one this mm. week. So. Happy birthday, Knox. We, sh- we should do like... We should get fans to write in happy birthday wishes to Knox. <laughs> One years old, man. Yeah. That's crazy. Cool. So we got Darlington. Make sure you get your vote for that paint scheme. And then we are busy, man. We go to North Wilkesboro the following week. Yeah. And then the Charlotte. So yeah. we're like, we're within driving distance of all these tracks. It's going to be very busy. And then we head to St. Louis out west. The gateway of the West. Yeah. So, so what what do you what's what's going through your mind? Which track are you most anticipating besides Darlington? I mean I think Darlington for sure. Other than that, I would say Wilkesboro's gonna be cool. I feel like with what we just learned on the mile and a half at uh, Kansas, we can take that to Charlotte and even p- perform even better. So really the whole month of May, man. I'm really excited about this next stretch of races and what we have going as a organization and um, hopefully just to continue to build on that and be fast in the month of May because I think it can it can really turn things around for us if we can string together four or five solid nights like we had uh, there in Kansas. Agreed. So we got a lot of exciting racing related activities for the month of May but we also have some really cool Stuff going on at Level Cross. First off, shout out to Petty Family Foundation for Blue Jeans and Boots. Pretty exclusive event that happens at your uh, grandpa's homestead. I want to tell us a little bit about that. Always a fun event to be a part of. I think Tasty Duck's going to be out this year, and folks from Customers Bank are coming. So it should oh, be a good man. time. Sonny and Duck. Yeah, they're serving Duck at, at Blue Jeans and Boots, but... Man, it's, it's usually a pretty good time. It's out at Grandpa's house, and everybody just comes out and fellowships for the night. And, um, usually some pretty good food and music. And, they bringing the Petten Zoo out this year? I don't know. Are they bringing the Petten Zoo? Uh, yeah, I never heard. know what I'm getting into when I go to Blue Jeans and Boots. It's a wild time, man. They got they, Last year they had simulators. There was a buffalo riding competition. It's, <laughs> some crazy stuff. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe they maybe they release some animals out in the crowd. Yeah, liven some yeah. Uh, liven some things up. That'd be pretty cool, right? Yeah. We also have an exclusive event called the PG Invitational. Really? Oh, you should know about it, man. You you did a uh, you did a commercial with uh, Greg Stedman. Remember? Is that celebrating Hemi Day? <laughs> yeah, you don't remember that? Four twenty six. Let me guess. It's on the 26th of this month. No, it's actually on May 25th. We we, we did the commercial on 4-26th. Oh. This is the part where we start losing people. So this is what happened, folks. We needed to film a, a commercial. It was, it was a video for social media. We got Greg Stedman, COO of Petty's Garage, the guru. And we dragged Thad out of bed and told him, hey, say these words. And we did like 17 takes, and it was very entertaining on the red floor. We were in front of a uh, 426 Hemi, all to talk about the PG Invitational. What is the PG Invitational? I'll tell you. Well, it's a celebration of, A, our 15th anniversary in business. So Petty's Garage, 15 years. Can you believe that, Thad? 15 years. Yeah, majority of my life has been... Penny's Grove. Majority of your life. Can you believe that's that? That's right. That's weird to think about because I only remember it being a race team when I was growing up. But for the better part of my life, it's been Petty's Garage and not the race team there. That's crazy. That is crazy. I, I can't believe, like, yeah, I, where was I? I think it was in your dad's office. I saw this, like, magazine cover. Dude, not to go off on a subject, but, I mean, it's amazing what what <laughs> how long, how short of a time that was ago. I think it was like two thousand four or something. Do you know what a magazine I'm talking about? That was 20- the magazine cover. 
That was when? 20 years ago, if it was 2004. 2004. It had to have been because your dad's holding Harrison. He's like a toddler. And then you don't even look like you. I mean, I don't I don't even know who that is. Because I would have been like three yeah. years old, man. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure your baby pictures don't look like you now either. Oh, I look just like I did, man. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I haven't changed an ounce. Anyway, what were we talking about? The PG Invitational. Okay, so <laughs> I've lost everybody at this point. In all seriousness, it's going to be a really cool show. We have a lot of cool things slated up. So like I said, we're celebrating 15 years of Petty's Garage, 60 years of the 426 Hemi, and then we're also celebrating 65 years of Petty Blue with our friends at BASF. So, oh, that's what I can talk about. How can I forget? So while you were moseying around in Myrtle Beach or wherever the heck you were, we had two schools two local schools, Randleman High School and Wheatmore High School. I believe you went to Wheatmore briefly, right? Or no? Yeah, Did I, you go to I Wheatmore? two years at Wheatmore High School. There you go. So that's your that's your calling, I guess. They came out, their automotive programs, we gave them the task a month ago to come up with the coolest trophy designs for this PG Invitational. So we gathered identical parts, engine parts, talking about connecting rods, pistons, push rods, timing chains, everything. They each got the same parts. They came up with trivia design. They came out two weeks ago to Petty's Garage. The students were able to go in the body shop, paint it special anniversary blue, which is a really cool shade of Petty Blue with some diamond in it. And right now, you can vote for your favorite design. These trophies are going to be hand-picked by you, the audience. And whoever is the winner gets a very generous donation in product and cash from BASF. So this is all to help students, young people, to get involved with the automotive industry. Doesn't necessarily mean turning wrenches. It could be in marketing. It could be painting, welding. We need more students and young people in the automotive trades. And this is how we're going to start doing it is really cool events like that to get young folks involved and uh, see how much fun they're going to have when they're working at places like Petty's Garage. So so while I was slaving away with these kids, what were you doing? You were at Myrtle Beach playing yeah. with dolphins or something? Two weeks off. We had two weeks off, right? The first week I spent at Petty Fest. Oh, man, there was a lot of people out there. First week I spent at Petty Fest and hanging out around the house, mowed my yard, just did some stuff like that for the week off. And then um, the next weekend I went to Myrtle Beach and hung out on the waterway, played a little golf, got away for a little bit. Just me and my fiance cleared our heads, came back, ready to go to work for Kansas. It was a good time. Weather was nice. A couple good off weekends that I felt like we really needed and got got back on track and then went to Kansas, had a solid, what I would consider a solid weekend for where we had been the last previous three races. And heading into Darlington this weekend, I think we'll, like you said, have new goals and have a good solid weekend, man. That's the plan. All right, Thad, you said it all. We are super excited going to the official throwback weekend at Darlington. So can't thank everybody enough that is on board the truck this weekend. So thank you so much for that. Again, reminders, go vote for Thad's truck as your favorite throwback scheme. Go out and buy that beautiful merch. You got some t-shirts. You got some die cast. The shirts are actually shipping out, like I said, this week. So you can get them. The die cast won't be available till like, you know, Christmas time. So get those pre-orders in. But uh, what, what, what else you got, That Any parting words of wisdom for the fine folks out there? Really grateful to have everybody on the truck and participating with me this week in Darlington. And I look forward to a good, solid weekend with a, a cool uniform, too. Yep. Thank you guys for listening today to Made in Level Cross. And be sure to like, subscribe, leave us a review, and follow me on all social media platforms.